Hello, I'm Matthew Gavidia. Today on MGH Life Sciences News Network, the American Journal of Managed Care is pleased to welcome Dr. Stuart Factor, Professor of Neurology and Director of the Movement Disorders Program at the Emory University School of Medicine. What significance may the dissolvable aspect of Kenmobi have for those with PD? Kenmobi is a, it's, it's a uh, on-demand therapy that um, you take when you're starting to feel like your off time is coming to abort it. And, um, to control you for several hours and fill that gap. The other um, uh, available drugs uh, out there are the um, uh, injectable form of apomorphine and the um, inhaled form of levodopa that just came out um, last summer. And um, so I, I think one of the benefits of the Kinmobi is that you just take the film and you put it under your tongue. There's no mechanism related to using it. And um, so it's, it, there's an ease of use there that I think will be beneficial to patients, especially those advanced Parkinson patients who are, you know, who really have trouble manipulating an injector or even manipulating an inhaler. So I, I think um, that aspect of it will be um, very helpful and easier uh, for patients. And it's absorbed very quickly, and it has a rapid uh, time of onset. At uh, 15 minutes when we were examining people in the office, we were already seeing a pretty substantial benefit in patients. So it works much faster than the oral medications also. So I think that's where the dissolvable piece of it uh, is helpful. In your experience, how have you managed the care of patients with Parkinson's disease experiencing off periods? What requests do you typically have from patients? Oh, well, you know, the requests are that they have these off periods and that whether predictable or unpredictable, the timing of their meds just is not adequately um, helping them for that. And, um, and that they interfere with their daily function whether in a minor way or a major way. So, um, you know, the way of addressing this is there are sort of, um, uh, there are sort of seven, four directions now that people can go in treating this. So we have adjunctive medicines that they can take with their levodopa. These are medicines that either enhance the duration of effect of levodopa. So there are two forms of long-acting levodopa that are available or there are drugs, they're called COMT inhibitors that um, enhance the absorption of the levodopa to make it last longer. There are MAO inhibitors that decrease the metabolism of dopamine in the brain to make the dopamine within the brain that's already there stay around longer. Um, and then there are dopamine agonists, which stimulate specific dopamine receptors and all have much longer half-life. So you can utilize those as an adjunct to try and prevent the off times or diminish them by continue by, you know, providing them with regular oral dosing. One of the dopamine agonists actually is a patch. Uh, so that, that can be helpful. So that's one strategy of treating those. Uh, another strategy is uh, infusions. Uh, so there is a uh, levodopa gel that can be infused into directly into the um, gastric tract, into the duodenum. It's done with a feeding tube, a, you know, a, a PJ tube, we call it. And so they get, they carry a pump around and they get a continuous flow of this levodopa gel to try to do away with the ups and downs that people are having in their blood levels. So that's a second way of handling it. The third is the on-demand drugs, the injectable epimorphine, the inhaled levodopa, and now the uh, sublingual um, epimorphine. So that's another option where instead of regularly taking higher doses all day long, they can just target the regions or the times when they're having these. And then the final uh, choice is surgery, which is uh, deep brain stimulation surgery, where they get an electrode placed into their brain to um, alter the firing patterns in the deep regions of the brain. What further innovations or trials within treatment of off periods are you currently monitoring? So one that's very interesting is uh, gene therapy, 
where they actually will uh, inject into the brain a, a virus that carries the DNA for uh, a gene or an enzyme that um, enhances the um, metabolism of levodopa to dopamine so that more of the levodopa getting into the brain gets converted and it's more continuous. And so it would help to sort of reverse the onset of these uh, off times and, um, um, you know, and improve the uh, utilization of the drugs within, within the brain itself. So that's one that's already uh, being tested in patients in clinical trials. And there are other gene therapies, not just that one, but there are combined multi-gene trials and uh, several other types that are um, uh, being utilized. It's really great, uh, interesting technology uh, that's available. I think um, there was something in the news uh, this week or last week, and I haven't actually read the details of it, but stem cells are coming back into the picture and uh, they're gonna be looked at. And I know there are several um, um, you know, tech companies that are developing stem cells from patients' own uh, skin cells. So they take the skin cells and they, they engineer them to become dopaminergic neurons. And, and then um, several months later, they can inject them into the brain in order to treat fluctuating patients to see if it kind of improves that. So those are uh, some of the things I think. The deep brain stimulation, there's a lot of technological changes that are, that are occurring as well. So, um, so there are a number of very interesting uh, things. There's also uh, uh, subcutaneous infusions. Instead of doing, uh, putting a feeding tube in, you can do an infusion just under the skin and there's an apomorphine study that's ongoing, and there's a levodopa study that's ongoing as well. And lastly, is there anything else you wanted to talk about that has not yet been addressed? Um, <clears throat> no, I just think this is, a, you know, uh, this is a very exciting time for Parkinson's patients, and the addition of new drugs like Kinmobi, uh, providing more choices for patients I, I actually will help improve quality of life for at least some patients with Parkinson's disease. And the more choices we have, as you, as I told you, we now have numerous choices for treating off times. As those choices increase, um, there's more of an opportunity to find the right uh, treatment for individual patients to help their function and to allow them to have better quality of life long-term. So that to me is the, um, the big opportunity that we're seeing with uh, the approval of uh, several new drugs and the development of new technologies. Okay. To learn more, visit our website, agmc.com. I'm Matthew Gavidia. Thanks for joining us.